Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. There she is once again, Ronnie Bennett. Hello, Ronnie. How do you like my COVID haircut? I can't. Uh, it's not a haircut. That's my problem. I can't get a haircut. Oh, really? Is is a COVID hair? Well, then what is it? I guess a it COVID, is. COVID means you don't get a haircut. Oh, no, it just goes oh, wild. Oh, oh, well, then that's just called COVID hair. <laughs> All right. I, you know, I'm, I'm not up on the jargon. I, apologies. They say everybody, uh, they say, that, of course, the hair is one thing, but they say everybody who is in uh, quarantine, okay, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it gets what's called the COVID pounds, the weight you put on. And it's 15. 15- oh, no, no, no. I've lost 14 pounds. Well, y- you, have a, you have a problem. Okay. Yes, I have a different problem. <laughs> you know, at least at least what you can say is at least I'm losing weight. Anyway, well, I, there was there were many 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 years in my life when I would have been happy to lose weight this quickly. Yeah, but anyway, so um, uh, but there's 15 pounds they call the COVID pounds. Everybody during the summer, winter, and then summer in the times they've been indoors gains about 15 pounds. Because you just don't do as much exercise as you once did. You know? Well, I haven't noticed it about people I know around here. They seem to all be the same. Yeah, but they, you live in an area where they can still kind of go out, you know, like they could take a walk and not bump into anybody. You know what I'm saying? Not necessarily. but Yeah. Oh, well, this, this whole thing is starting to get to me. I mean... The, you know, you were talking about that you can't wear a mask. Tell me this every time we talk. Well, no, but you you were telling me that you couldn't wear wear a mask because of COVID. You know, because of rather your condition, because of COVID. and because you have the COPD. I can't breathe. You know, yeah, I have to yeah. keep pulling it down to breathe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I got to tell you, I, I don't have COPD, and it gets to me after a while. You know, I mean, I, it's it, hard. It, depending, particularly depending. You know, certain masks with several filters, it's really hard to breathe through them. Yeah, well, I try to take a walk, and I'm just using one of these, uh, you know, surgical deals. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, I find after a while, I'm panting like crazy because I can't, you can't breathe the same way. And and I've got to keep it on because in New York, people are everywhere. You know, you it's not like... You, I live in the, the suburbs and I can take a walk down the street and there's nobody going to be there, you know. So I have to wear a mask. And I'm getting to get to the point where I can't stand wearing a mask, so I just don't go out. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. It's the world we live in. But Marjorie went out and bought one of these Peloton bikes. And at, wow, what are those, $10,000? No, 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 no. They're, they're $2,500, about $2,500. But guess how much she was paying for her gym? She was paying $2,500 a she year. She was going to a gym? Yes. During this? Oh, not during this. Prior to this. And then she got the Peloton so she could do some kind of exercise because the gym was closed down. But she paid $2,500 a year for her gym. So she's actually paid uh, you know once she a year has passed she will have paid this thing off because she would have spent that at the gym so you know and she has no intention of going back because she's got the bicycle thing and then they've got the peloton you can go online and they have exercise stuff you can do with a coach coaching you and uh you know so because she's an exercise i've seen the commercials yes she's an exercise free but the peloton's you know really quite terrific i mean I only use it once in a while. You know. Where's the card? You got to hold up the sign. You're selling Peloton. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, this this episode is brought to you by Peloton, uh, yes. but it, you know, and there are quite a few other companies now are doing the same thing. You know, not or, and not with a name like Peloton. Peloton has done terrifically. They are the winners of the let's make money during COVID <laughs> race. 
but it's a hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. For advertising. Yeah, but I'm telling you, it, it you know, it, it's it's I think it's pretty terrific all the way around, you know. Uh, but I, then again, I'm not a big exercise guy. Marjorie is. She she, you know, go went to the gym three times a week and did the spin classes. And now she gets off that Peloton. She says, "I did 15 miles today," and I go, "Really." You know, because I can barely eke out, say, two blocks on that thing. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well. But you know me. That way we were matched. Neither one of us are exercising. Yeah, but you knew me. I was never one for a great amount of exercise. In fact, it's amazing. I'm as in good shape and have lived as long as I have, considering I didn't do anything to maintain this body. So. Yeah, and our bodies, do you know, if you don't, abuse them too badly they're pretty good they last a while they're, 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 i would say that uh, the warranty at uh, my mine's gone past the warranty date so is yours you know so well uh, and lately not so easily <laughs> well not so easily but you know uh if i drop dead tomorrow i'd say i got some bonus miles you know so uh, and you you got some bonus miles. They should too. be easy. They should be easier you, than mine. You got bonus miles, except the part I feel bad for you about is the fact that about three years of those miles, you were busy taking care of this problem you have. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it would no. be nice if you didn't have to go through all you went through the last couple of years and you were just hit by a Mack truck and that was it. Oh, jeez. Don't talk like that. <laughs> well... You know what I'm saying. I mean, I was talking with my palliative care mm -hmm. physician early this morning on one of these kind of calls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And life is getting very hard for me recently. Um, there's all kinds of maintenance, medicines, things I mm -hmm. have to do, pain mm -hmm. control, yeah. breathing apparatus and stuff like that. And, um, and it certainly affects various ways I'm thinking about things mm. and and end of life and not end of life and I'm a particularly impressed as things get harder almost day by day how fiercely I still feel life I didn't expect to feel it so fiercely right now and um, what, what do you mean by fiercely feeling life I, I, I... that, that the, the, the imperative to be alive, okay. the imperative to keep going is there. And with all the things that I have to deal with every day to keep, I was going to say body and soul together. It's, I guess it's all leaking out a little bit, but slowly. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm surprised at how fierce the feeling is. But at the other, and the other side of that is... Um, how interesting it is to live through this. If you get hit by a Mack truck, well, you're walking down the street one day, everything is fine. You're on your way home or going to the grocery or to see a friend. Wham, you're gone. You don't know anything. Mm -hmm. I'm getting to experience this. Yeah. The end of life. Yeah. The day will come when I call up my and my palliative care physician and my hospice nurse and say, okay, we're there. It's time to get the band together and do those drugs. Yeah. And, um, and that day will come. I don't know when that will come. But between now and then, this is fascinating to watch it happen to myself. Wow. And how my feelings change day to day. And they go so high sometimes of... I want to keep living and other days when I hurt too much and it's just all too much that why can't I just close my eyes and stop it all end it why does it have to why do I have to get that band together and do the drugs why can't I just close my eyes and it goes those are the two extremes and mostly it floats somewhere in the middle mm -hmm. and it's fascinating I'm having I was going to say a fine old time, kind of following myself along and seeing what I'm doing and saying and feeling. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, and if you get hit by a Mack truck, you don't you don't get that. So when I feel lucky that I'm getting this time. Wow. 
That's that's interesting. Do you know? Um, and and but how do you feel physically at this point? Right this minute, I feel okay. In about oh, I'm a little late. I'm 20 minutes late for my noon pain pill. Um, they what they do is keep pain at bay completely. Right. Uh, I have others if there's what they call breakthrough pain that is then you take a stronger thing. Uh, but mostly it works, and when it stops working, my hospice nurse jiggers around the medications, and she seems to make it work each time. So, you know, I have a couple of bad days a week when I curl up on the bed and whimper a lot until the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But that's a couple of days a week, and so far it's worth it. Um, and, uh, and I'm very slow. Uh, you know, Alex, I lose time. I lose time. I'm very slow in that I have to move slowly because of breathing problems. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, it, it's happened now several times that I'm sitting here in my office and it's in the front of the house. And I want something I know is in the bedroom. I have to book there or something. Yeah. So I walk, I glance at the clock. Oh, 10.15. So I walk back slowly back to the bedroom I find the book and I walk back here and I look at the clock and it says 20 to 11 what did I do for 25 minutes I picked up a book <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the rest of that time went <laughs> and that happens to me a lot <laughs> and I, I you know this is going to be the stupidest question I've ever asked anybody is there anything fun about dying? Or would you say that that was it, this whole idea of this exploration? Because you've always kind of been an explorer. You've always been these, as I call it, the Sacagawea of aging, you know. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. You never told me that. <laughs> well, then you are. You're this, you know. Uh, traveling across the country. Uh, no, but looking, looking, get, look, going, traveling across the country of old age with your hand up to your forehead yes. looking into the distance <laughs> and saying we're going this way okay yeah, here's what i here, here's what's over that way <laughs> you know um and, and that's what you're kind fun. of doing what you one of the, one of the functions today is just you doing that you know well you know it's i wrote a piece on my blog for today uh wednesday telling a story about a woman I used to work for who I discovered. We didn't much like each other, but we worked well together. And I discovered quite shockingly, it surprised me, that she was a boxing fan. This is back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that her father had no sons and he was a boxing fan, so he took her to the boxing matches and she remained a fan. And I, you know, blurted out at her a terrible thing to do to I said, that's the most boring way to spend an evening I could ever think of. <laughs> and she said to me, yeah. this is one of my great life lessons, by the way. Unexpected, came out of nowhere. She said, Ronnie, everything is interesting if you pay attention. And, and it, it's true. It has always been true. I mean, none of us have time to pay attention to everything. And especially if it's something that we think... That you think are are just, you know, blind, boring. If you pay attention, they become interesting. And so I'm not so sure about fun, although I can laugh about the weird time losses that I'm having, but I, it, it's not, it's interesting. I'm, with, if it had been the Mack truck, I wouldn't get to see what this, this, this travel log is or this, journey mm -hmm. to is like and how lucky that I get to watch it in myself I don't control it I don't think very much mm -hmm. but I keep an eye on it yeah yeah and it interests me so, you, so. It, it, so are you in, in your old own shall we say end of life phase yeah are you an observer or a participant well, now that's another interesting thing I brought up today. Throughout my life at various times, 
I didn't pay huge attention to it, but bubbled up from time to time, is I could n I never planned my life. You know, you must have known a couple people in school that wanted to be a doctor or a lawyer or right. whatever, and they grew up and they actually did that. I never had anything I wanted to do, and I fell into what I did because of you, because of producing your radio show, and then went on to television and internet and stuff. Um, and that was very, I had a great career. I had no complaints about the work I did in my life. I had a wonderful time. But um, but now and then in my life, and maybe when you're lying awake at night in bed or something, I don't know when, but you kind of feel, did I really have anything to do with this? I did not plan my life. It just happened to me. When I was out of work, yeah, there were some frantic moments when you needed a job, but sooner or later, something dropped in my lap, mm -hmm. and I had a good job that I enjoyed. And sometimes I feel like I had nothing to do with this. Like it was all written down before I got here. I mm -hmm. know this is getting into woo woo territory. And yes, it is me. getting into woo woo territory. Go ahead. Um, but but it, sometimes, not often, but sometimes it has felt like somebody wrote this all down somewhere, and I'm just reading the script. You know, it's, I don't have a lot to do with it. I'm just doing the doing the show. You know. Yeah. Getting the words said. Yeah. Uh, so you you you. In other words, you feel as though maybe this whole script was written before you ever got here. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, it's not a big obsession with me. It's come up a few times in my life. I mean, it's interesting where life takes us, as you say. I don't think when I met you, you ever expected you'd be a television producer, for, let alone for a major television personality. You I, know. I had no idea. I worked in offices, Alex, remember? Yeah. I typed. Yeah. She was in the typing pool. <laughs> you needed a producer and they wouldn't give you one, so yeah. I started doing the show. Yeah. When we broke up, I took that with me to other places, but, and thank God, I had a wonderful career. I enjoyed my career a lot. And... And bring this full circle back to where we were. And, and, and part of it was the kind of shows I always did were like your radio shows. They covered all kinds of topics. And, and, and I never had one interest or two interests in life. I'm interested in everything. As I said to someone, or maybe I wrote it, that, you know, all of my knowledge is miles wide and, and inches deep. You know, I mm -hmm. just know a little bit about a lot of things. And nothing in depth, um, and uh, and I've had a wonderful time doing that. And here I am again, kind of handed this thing at the end of my life that I didn't expect, I, and I still don't know what to expect. I don't know how it goes forward from here. By the way, in case but people sure don't know, in case people don't, in case people don't know, she's she's dying. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yes. COVID and, as COVID, wrong, 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 COPD and cancer. Yeah. Um, a whole lot of C's there, isn't there? Yeah. Um, it, uh, and, and so it's, it's an interesting that this end of life is it's unwinding for me is, is how my life has gone that I didn't even plan. Yeah. But here's another interesting thing for me to pay attention to up until the end. How, how good is that? Yeah. Well, I, I when, don't just uh, stop. Yeah. You know. Well, when I you look going. back, when you look back at it, it's kind of like with me. I uh, sometimes I sit here and I go, "Oh, I wish I were on radio again. I don't have a career anymore." Blah, blah, blah. And then I go, "But the one I had was so exceptional compared to what a lot of people have <coughs> that uh, I got to realize at a certain time in your life, you're not working anymore. You know." Nobody wants you any that's longer. Okay. I think that old age, I think that we lose our energy. Even if you don't have a serious disease like me, our energies wane. Oh, God, yes. The world becomes so different. You and I don't know anything about youth culture anymore. If we pretend to, we are lying to Can ourselves. Can I tell you this? This is the, There's a show on called TMZ. And we watch it every day. Yeah. I don't know why we watch it. And for the whole hour, Marjorie and I are just looking at each other going, who's that? <laughs> and yes. who's that? Yeah. And who's that? And they say, and the big star, blah, blah, blah. And you go, what? Where did they come from? <laughs> this is exactly what I mean. 
we don't know anything about American culture anymore that matters. Why, why is it that happens? You would think that your involvement in culture would maintain itself throughout your whole life, that you would be on, you know, if it isn't uh, Frank Sinatra. Now Excuse it's me. Tell me about your 12-year-old neighbor who cares about Frank Sinatra. Well, what I'm saying is is that one day it should be <laughs> Frank Sinatra, and the next day you should be going, well, I mean, I, I have to say I do like her. You, you like Lady Gaga, but then you should be able to move out to over to some guy who's... Name Why? is only Why? is only. The world moves on. No, 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 no. Don't don't hang on. The world moves on. Yeah. And we have to get out of the way because there are new things, and changes, and it's all oh, different, so, and it's going to uh, differently uh, okay. thought about differently. So this whole um, Trump thing is a good idea then. <laughs> and I thought we could get to the whole thing. <laughs> You know, all I'm saying is, I know I understand what you're saying, and 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 I I feel very out of touch with what's happening today, and uh, here's where it really gets bad. Remember the days when they say next week on Saturday Night Live, so and so is going to be the guest host, and you go, oh, I'll have to watch that because I like so and so. Now I watch that show, and the guest host comes on, and I never heard of the person in my life. Oh, sometimes I have, but what I've been watching now in the new season, and I realized the last two or three years, the thing I really, really, really like is the is the weekend news. Mm -hmm. So I kind of record it and fast forward the next day to the news. That's what. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Which one do you watch? Anyone in particular? Colin Jost and and Michael Shea. Who? Colin Jost and Michael Shea. Oh, oh, oh! They're Sunday. Oh, they're yeah, that thing. I, I was trying. I didn't know. It's what not you're Sunday. Thinking. It's Saturday Night Live. It's Saturday Night Live. It's the news segment. That's what how I think yes. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they actually have gotten very good. You know, they're. <laughs> oh, they're in, in fact, <laughs> last week's show was maybe the worst Saturday Night Live I have ever seen in my entire life, and yet that segment came on and it was it was, it was good, but the rest of the show just. It sucked. I couldn't believe how bad it was. Well, you know, I've never taken well to their skits. I've always thought their skits were shallow or not well thought out. And a lot of that's because you have to do it at the last minute and 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 you have to make sure that it fits with the, who the guest host is who may or may not have the talents you're looking for and so on. But Michael J. and Colin Joe start great. They are. <laughs> They're terrific. They're, They're terrific. They're terrific. But, uh, you know, I mean, you, um, I, 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 you know, with Saturday Night Live, people go, you know, it's not as good as it used to be. I said, it wasn't even good then, <laughs> you know. Oh, I'm not so sure. I've enjoyed it a lot through the years. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think we think of it more as being a good show just because it's been a part of our lives. It's, it's 50 years old. That show yeah, is 50 okay. years old. That's okay. So are we. Yeah. Remember when we used to know some of the people that were on that show? You know. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Michael O'Donoghue, who was one of the writers, and Mr. Mike on that show was uh, come came over to dinner all the time up in. That Riverdale. was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago, and 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 uh, Michael's been dead for many, 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 many years. You know. And I will soon join him. <laughs> well, and and uh, keep, uh, keep. You see, I do have some fun with this end of life well, stuff. Well, well, stake out the territory because I'm. I'll be there soon enough. You know. <laughs> I'll be waving for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, you know. So I mean, I the only thing that pisses me off about the idea of dying. I mean, I have a great. As you know, I've always had a great fear of dying. But the thing that bothers me the most is all the people that are going to still be having a good time here while I'm. I can't have a good time anymore. Oh, know. Alex, no, no. Don't yeah. it's not going to be a good time from here and out if yeah. the world lasts all. Yeah. It's not going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. No, the way it's going, it's I gonna mean. It's going to be a hard, hard life for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's let, let's find something to laugh about in everything. <laughs> there must be something funny about COVID. No. No, <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, think there's you know. anything funny about COVID. Not uh, at all. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. And we've done well, I don't want to. I, you know, let, let's leave it. The only going time there. I laughed about COVID is when Trump got it. So you know, 
that's that. Hey, listen, we I just looked. We've run out of time. You know? Okay. Yeah. See how okay. easy it was when we started we'll off? We were having trouble hooking her up. I'm and not everything. going away too quickly. We'll do it again. Oh, no. You better. Listen, I'm planning on having you here. I got you penciled in for the next year. <laughs> well, I don't know about well, that. Well, <laughs> you have an obligation, dear. You have an obligation. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie <laughs> Bennett. She can be found at uh, timegoesby.net. That's her blog. It's terrific. She's terrific, and I love you dearly, sweetheart. I love you too, darling. Take good care. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And I love talking to Ronnie. Just love talking to her, you know? Who, who, you know, that, I, I, that, that's one of the things I'm proudest of, I suppose, in my life, is that the person who was my wife and is now my ex-wife is not an ex-friend. She's a friend, and, and we've been able to keep that friendship going. There was a period of time when we weren't talking to each other, but now it's a whole different thing. Well, it's time to go to our Zoom panel, our citizen panel. I don't know why I call it the Zoom panel, because... We've been calling it the Citizen Panel for the longest time, and uh, um, let's uh, let's see wh who's here. Let me uh, let me see here. Uh, if we go like this, you get me on Zoom, and then when we admit all, uh, let's see here who starts jumping in here. Uh, oh, okay, we got the Brian Neary, and uh, we got there. We go. All these people are just popping right in. Wait a minute. Where's, oh, there's Brian Neary. I wondered where he was. Hi, everybody. How are you this evening? How are you this evening? I'm doing great. Uh, oh, I thought you couldn't hear me. Can you hear huh? Can you hear me, Brian? No. No? Wait, then how come? <laughs> how come you said no? I read your lips. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Robert, hey, Robert Natali, you haven't been with Robert. us in about a haven't been with us in about a week. Where you been? Uh, living life, that's all. Really? Well, we missed you. Thank you. I missed you guys as well. Yeah, because this is a uh, this is a, is a better panel with you. Wow, we yeah. Don't wow, put pressure we. on me now. No, I don't put pressure on you. It's a great. Uh, I love having all the other people here too. The call. Uh, in fact, I got a very nice letter today about somebody who said the show is better than it's ever been, and uh, I'm happy to hear that, you know, that somebody feels that, that they they like the camaraderie better than the animosity. Yeah, it's funny, at work, I got a message from somebody, I, I recognize the name, I've seen him a couple times, mm -hmm. and then he, he messaged me, said, oh, I hear you on Alex Bennett all the time. I said, oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Really? So, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of those people lurking out there, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 How are you all this evening? Good. Uh, Good. And anything in the news that is it hitting your fancy? No, oh, please. Yeah, Stay a million me. people voted in Texas yesterday. Boy, yes. Yes. Oh, well, yeah. That's because that's they couldn't get to that mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. A million people? Yep. And you know most of them have got to be Democrats, or at least people oh, yeah. voting for Biden. Standing in line for three or four hours, yeah. yeah. Republi yeah. Republicans, Republicans don't the, do that. What? They're using like the the basketball uh, arenas, right? Also, I heard they had like one. They had like three hundred voting booths in one of them. Yeah. Wow. wow. I heard a great quote from a woman on one of the lines in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And they said, gee, we heard you've been waiting for four hours. And the woman said, oh, no, I've been waiting for four years. <laughs> <laughs> years. Uh, I like that question. You know, you can't help but hope uh -oh. and believe that the reason all this uh, excitement <clears throat> is built behind people getting out to vote and everything is because they just want to vote Trump out. You know, I, I really think that's the driving force. I don't think people are going crazy, the Republicans saying, I've got to go to the polls because i got to vote this guy back in. They, they want him in, you know. Or I don't want that Biden guy, that, that communist. Yeah. Did you hear the latest thing? 
Uh, the New York Post came up with uh, something that I don't know, Steve Bannon's been holding on to for a couple of years, and it's something off of uh, Hunter Biden's computer where it's a uh, email or something where he introduced him to a Ukrainian business, his father to a Ukrainian businessman. Burisma. Burisma. Did you, re did you hear about that today? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Fox was making a big deal out of it. Of course. Nobody else was. I didn't see it on any other news operation. Nope. You know. What do you think there is? To, I don't think that story is going to hurt Biden, do you? No. Well, I already voted for him. Well, yeah. yeah. Too late. <laughs> but I'm saying Too late. Al also the traction uh, is already there. And this isn't going to, like, you know, suddenly kill everybody's... Uh, 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 taste for voting for Biden. Oh, I'm not going to vote for him because Hunter Biden introduced the guy from Burisma to him. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, he was working with Burisma, so he, wouldn't it seem logical that he would introduce his father to one of the people he's working with? You know, <laughs> eh. you know, it's a, it's nothing much. Oh, I mean, Trump will latch on to it and, <laughs> you know, call it some kind of major conspiracy and things like that. But uh, yeah, who knows? Malaria said Malaria said that Barron had COVID. Yeah, Barron had COVID, yeah. but the, because he's young, he didn't come down with any symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, but she Beautiful did. Beautiful immune system. Beautiful immune system. Yeah. He yeah. Has. Well, she, she's a little less obnoxious about it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, she seemed more like, uh, in what she was saying, an appreciative mother that her son didn't get sick, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but she said she got quite sick, you know, mm -hmm. that she had a temperature and she had aches and pains and all kinds of misery for quite a while. Um, so. And Trump just left her at the White House while he went to the hospital then. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Classy Is that, guy. Yeah. That, that was I the darling. one I couldn't figure out. Wouldn't you take your wife with you? Yeah. But that's what co the, the doctor said. He said, oh, well, why, why did you guys bring him to the hospital? And he says, because he's the president. It's like, yeah, whatever. but exactly. that's his wife. And what if she stays back at the, they didn't think about this. What if she stays back at the White House, does not get the benefit of all these drugs and drops dead? Yeah. He'll deny it happened. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. fake news. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know. God, do I want this thing to be over with. How many more days do we have left? Anybody know? 20. 20 more yeah. days. Oh, God. 20 days, 20 days of this misery. Well, that's 20 days till the beginning of everything. This is going to be the start yeah. of everything. You know something? Uh, I may be, I may be gonna have to eat these words. Okay. Uh-oh. But I think that it's going to be such a rout he won't be able to even ask for a recount. You know? I think so. Uh, you know, I think it's I think it's going to be an absolute rout. I think he's going to get Texas. I think Texas is yep. turning blue. Um, I think he's going to get Wisconsin. Uh, I think he's going to get a lot of the states that they don't know whether he's going to get them or not and whatever. I mean, he's still pretty much got all the states he needs to get the Electoral College. But I just think it's going to be it's going to be an absolute uh, disaster for the Republican Party, uh, and these guys are going to be running for the exits, trying to find the best position to be in, so that they don't get blamed for Trump. You know, they're the going to start projects. Hmm? The Lincoln Project is in, embedding all those names in everybody's head yep. over and over again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but also, I mean, I think that. Uh, these guys are going to, they, it's going to be like, uh, I always hear, whenever I hear people talking about uh, uh, Christ, okay, uh, you know, how uh, all these people who knew, uh, what was it, uh, Judas, denounced him or disclaimed him five times or something like that. These guys, all of a sudden, the next day, it's going to be uh, <coughs> uh, Trump who? Donald who? <laughs> <laughs> you know, oh, I didn't really, really like him or support him. I was just there saying that because I had to be a good party stalwart. 
Yeah. Just like Lindsey Graham, right? He said, oh, listen to my words in 2016. You can use my words later if this ever happens again. Well, and it happens again, and he just, duh, you know. We're using them. Yeah. Yeah. Read my lips, no new taxes. I think that was the last time something like that yep. came back to bite somebody in the <laughs> ass, you know. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it. it, it uh, uh, all I'm saying is, is that I, I just, I... I, I see a real route here. I mean, I've been looking at the numbers from Nate Silver, who's pretty good at this sort of thing. I mean, I've finally realized, you know, his site doesn't only deal with um, uh, the odds on races, political races. He also does sports. Yeah. You know, I <laughs> guess where he started. As kind of an odds maker? A baseball guy. Yeah. Writing for a site. In fact, he was one of the founders of a site. If you're a baseball fan, it's the only site, in my opinion, called Baseball Prospectus. Mm -hmm. And Baseball Prospectus, what it does is it has absolutely new ways of looking at baseball statistics. It eschews statistics like batting average and ERA and the old classic things and has new ways of assessing the value of a player. Oh, wow. And Nate Silver was one of the founding fathers of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's where I kind of came to Money know. Ball. Well, Nate Silver, mm -hmm. I went over to his, what is it? It's 26. 538. 538 uh, at, uh, the other day and looked at it. And it really, really looks pretty good for Biden. 87%. Yeah, 87% chance, odds, yep. that he will win. Okay. Uh, and uh, that being the case, I don't know what he's going to go to the Supreme Court with. I guess he's going to go with the you know, mail-in ballots, but I don't know if the Supreme Court will even take that as a as a, a case. You know, um, and and I I don't even if they took it as a case, I don't know that he's necessarily shooing because he gave these people their jobs. You know, so. Um, um, I think it's. I think it's going to be a real route. You don't, do you, Bree? I don't. Okay. Now, <laughs> it, and, it, and and I've got new information for you. I'm actually trying to find it because I, I emailed it to someone last night. Uh, a new company, I think, uh, a research company at the Netherlands, but they have, uh, maybe it's Italy. They have uh, an outlet here in Virginia, mm -hmm. and they have. Uh, put out new information, what they did was they looked at social media mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that social media claims, uh, when you look at that, they do sentiment analysis, it shows uh, a dead heat and it says that Trump is, is right there in the thick of things. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Uh, so they, they think he has a chance is what you're saying. Nope. Yeah, <clears throat> I'll show you the, uh, the link when I find it. Yeah, but the, okay. But that, that goes against what most of the pollsters yeah. are, are, are saying everywhere, that this thing is... Ah, uh, yeah. So here's, here's the, uh, the article is, the polls are wrong. The U.S. presidential race is a near-dead heat. This artificial intelligence sentiment analysis tool says, after looking at social media, which is the real poll. You know, the other thing the is... Controls. Nah. One thing, I, 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 here, here's one question that I have, and that is, um, uh, why is it, and do you think mm -hmm. that Joe Biden could get rallies like Trump gets regularly all the time? Is and that why matter? Is that? Does that let, matter? Let, it, right. it does matter. And I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. People get excited about Trump. They get excited no, no, for no, him. No, no, And I disagree with you and, wholeheartedly. No. I, I think you're, you're barking up the wrong alley. You're not looking at Trump. You're looking at the reason why people show up for an entirely different reason. Uh, they've and come. If, they've come, they've, the they've, they've come to see a comedy act. Yep. You know they haven't come to see a politician. Yep. Uh, what, Robert, your 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 head's gone. Numbers numbers have been my life for the most part. You could say the same about Metallica, but it's the same eighteen thousand people in each and every town they go to. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make them widely popular. You know, it's the same people over and over. A, B, 
if you look at the camera shots and you take a look at the rest of the audience, it's tightened in on the people behind him. You don't see ever a full shot that shows thousands and thousands of people. Oh, wait a minute. I see now, Kevin, Kevin Stopper sent me a photo yesterday. Of a of, of the one of those uh, Trump up there with the people in the background, and there's mm-hmm. this one black guy there that he says has shown up in at yeah. least ten of those rallies it's in the, the background. Guy. Same the guy. same guy. Same guy. He's guy's crazy too. Yeah. So you, <laughs> that kind of makes your your uh, supposition uh, have legs, uh, Charlie, and then uh, uh, Mr. Larkin. Yeah. I just want to point out that Bernie Sanders had huge rallies, yeah. huge yes. rallies, 30, 40,000 people screaming yes. their heads off, and Biden yeah. it wasn't even close. That's because the will close. of the people was thwarted. And this, no, this gets it's back not. to... It's because Biden was more important. No, but why, also, why also, is, also, also, Harris also, Harris wait a minute, hold president. on a second. Also, also, uh, you got to remember... Uh, Joe Biden is not holding large rallies because he considers them unsafe for the well, people who attend them. Let me finish. I, that's why I said hypothetically, them. if yeah. the COVID wasn't here, do you think he would get, you know, as uh, big a rally? Who knows? Right. Who, who knows? He might get he think. might get bigger. I mean, because there's such a, a, a groundswell of people <laughs> wanting to support this guy. But they can't. But here's another question. They can't go to his why? rallies. They can't go to his rallies. Why why is Kamala Harris the vice presidential choice? Did Democrats get to vote on that? No, they never do. Neither do the no, Republicans. That's a flaw in our system. If you don't see that as a flaw, the, you know, the parties cre- we it we you know, we don't have a voice. How Trump far is down? The only thing. If you don't, Trump you're not the voting, way. right? <laughs> we don't have a voice. Because yeah, how far down do you want to vote? How far down the levels do you want to vote? Yeah, but how far? How far? The fact that it's Biden is because we have a system that's broken. They have all this. Wait a minute, hold on, Bree. This has been ever since I've been a kid. This is the way they went. The president, the guy, got nominated for president, and then he usually waited till the day he got uh, confirmed, and then that night he announced who his vice presidential candidate was going to be. That they always left that up to the presidential uh, no. candidate. <coughs> Wait, they left it up to the presidential uh, candidate. The well, you let me finish, Bree. They left it up to the presidential candidate because they wanted him to have someone that he felt he could work with. Okay. okay so originally it was whoever came in second place would get to be the uh, VP. I mean, going back to like the 1700s in the mm-hmm. first couple of elections. Because was, it wasn't a. Uh, one where Thomas Jefferson was VP because he lost to John Adams or something like that. I don't know. I don't know that they that they necessarily picked the president in the same way. Did they have full elections in those days where the populace voted, or was it like did no. Washington first get uh, made president by oh, the you, first you continental? Had to be a land, you had to be a landowner or something like that to yeah, vote. Yeah. But whoever came second would be the VP. But they, they don't do that any. I mean, obviously, they didn't, do that didn't even vote for president. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think the one thing with Biden, if he had a rally across the street with 20, you know, 10, 10,000 people, I don't think I would go. I mean, because of COVID. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the fact that Trump is holding these uh, what they're now calling uh, 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 spread uh, uh, spread super spreaders. What, 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 no, but no, wait a they have a term for it. The uh, pre- president, president uh, 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 gatherings. In fact, did you see? Did you see that sign? I can't remember what city it was in. It was one of those rotating signs where it changes from you know every minute or so, and then the one of them comes up, and it's a big red sign that says "super spreader of Trump super yeah. spreader event this way." And there was an arrow pointing <laughs> to it. The funeral Paul is a loving Trump when he comes to town. Oh, he's coming to town. We're going to have business. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I mean, they've, they've shown that these are super spreading events. Yeah, I mean, and they're crazy enough to go. You know, and, and, and Biden isn't ready to do that sort of thing. He is very careful about it. In fact, I notice even for effect, he's now wearing a mask even when he's giving a speech. 
you mm -hmm. know, just to look different. Yeah, if, if John Larkin and then yeah. Robin. Look at look at the states that he's doing these rallies in too. You would think that he doesn't need to go to those states. Right. You would think he's got those easy. Yeah, but you know, Florida, what was it Florida, Iowa? I mean, fuck, come on, Texas. He goes to Texas. Come on, he, he he's obviously playing defense. No, he's gonna yeah, he's he, gonna get well, creamed. Well, he knows he has a chance of losing Texas, right, Charlie? Yeah. Uh, and he has a chance of losing Wisconsin and Iowa. Iowa, he won by ten, uh, by yeah, ten percent uh, yeah. in the last mm -hmm. election. And they say he may not. He may lose Iowa. Looks it's like Lindsey Graham's in a neck and neck fight for his life, where he is. I wish I could say loses, his hmm? if he loses Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, it doesn't matter. He's gone. It's over. Yeah. You know, Robert. Hey, John, tell everyone the story of who Dr. Johnny Bananas is. I happen I to know. I saw that on TV. I wasn't paying attention. Who was it? Some, some guy that signed on to uh, yes. this, uh, herd, herd immunity yes. policy or something. I can explain it. Here's the deal. The deal is that the Trump administration is now quietly signing on to the idea of herd immunity that this is what they're going to go with, but they won't say it publicly because to say it publicly is to admit that there'll be a, a million deaths or whatever, some gross number. Yeah. And what they did was um, he didn't get any advice from the CDC on this. He didn't get Fauci. He didn't get, uh, you know, Scarfy. But they looked at a list of the Scarfie. people who signed this decree, and one of them was a guy named Dr. Johnny Bananas. <laughs> there was another guy that named Dr. Person Fake Name. <laughs> <laughs> that was Larkin. <laughs> I think I yeah. went to high school with him. <laughs> yeah, I think I went out with his sister, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. Son of a bitch. Well, <clears throat> You know, one of the things, <clears throat> Alex, is there's a, there's a saying, an old joke. It says there, there are two kinds of people in this world, those who believe there are two kinds of people and those who don't. And it's funny because the human mind always goes towards these dichotomies, it, you know, where, where complex thinking is more, is more needed. So what happens is we, we have a Democrat and a Republican. Mm -hmm. And so people decide they like Biden and they hate Trump. So anytime you raise an issue, they immediately close it out. It's like, no, we can't discuss that because if we discuss that, there might be something that, you know, we kind of agree with and we can't do that right now. We, we can yeah. only think, you know, Burger King, McDonald's, Pepsi, Coke, and it's, and it's wrong. And, it, and it's the reason why our country suffers because people now are, you know, grasping at Biden for this, you know, this, the old system because, you know, the Trump tried and, and, and it didn't work, but it's more complex than that. And, and I, I think that I have a valid point that uh, about the way that Kamala Harris was picked. I think that that's a valid argument. Well, I mean, it may be a valid it's argument, cool. but it's yeah. not the way we've run things for the last hundred years. You know, so, I mean, uh, well, Chicago, I mean, the, the, the ways that they what, picked changed. What do you mean? The, the Republicans. What do you, what do you mean? Chicago? <clears throat> what, what do, you mean? Do, do you think it, that in 2016 that Hillary Clinton would have been the nominee if the Democratic Party would have stood back and said, let's let the people decide? I don't think she would have been. I think it would have been Bernie Sanders. I don't think so. It, I don't think it so. was the super electors. I don't think so. And, I think that Bernie Sanders had a, 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 a very loud appeal among yeah. a group of people, but I don't think mm -hmm. he had the kind of appeal that you need to win an election. I don't think she had it either. I think they just didn't have any decent candidate to put up there who could beat Trump. Biden is has become a better candidate than I thought he would be, okay? Uh, he has just been uh, amazing in that he has been spot on because if you listen to him, every speech he gives, He's talking directly to the people and that I'm here for you, you know, and it's, <clears throat> it's an amazing kind of uh, kind of appeal that he's created for himself. But, uh, he, but what's interesting is you don't know the stories that I tell you, the, the things that he does on the on the campaign trail. I bet you I could tell you two or three things right now that he's done that 
raise questions. You wouldn't have heard of them because you yeah. you drowned and, and it out. I bet You've you. Already... I, I, know, I bet you every one of them is what you would call a gaff, and you can have all the gaffs you want. I mean, maybe he says I'm by, by accident. I'm running for senate. That's one of the things. Oh, hey, we can't elect him now because he accidentally said he was running mm -hmm. for the senate. No, he didn't lose. 100, 210,000 lives in this country because he was out to oh. lunch, okay? He, he Dan Quayle had a lot of gas, and people made a lot of fun of him, and I'm sure you know all those. Well, of course. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but... but, but so it's uh, not fair. What, what is that, yeah, what is that but, sound? But it's cleaned Who, up, though. Whose thing is... What's ringing? I don't know. Yeah. What happened? Okay. That was funny. Yeah, but, no, nothing here. You know, Actually, I'll tell you something. Here's one way to look at it. If you're voting for Biden, you must mm -hmm. hate him. And the reason why, anybody who'd want to be president right now mm -hmm. is a masochist, you know, uh, because yeah. because well, being president no. at this time is just, hey, it's ridiculous. Hey, same anybody with Obama. Who wants that job. Trump is not a masochist. Same. He's a sadist. Same. Well, you can say the same thing for a uh, hey. Lincoln. You know, yeah. it wasn't a good time same to be uh, president when Lincoln got elected. <laughs> and, and Obama too. When Obama bailed yeah. out the car companies, yeah. he had to do a lot of stuff that I'm sure he wouldn't want to do when he starts being president. You know. Yeah. Well, well you know what you mean, you know, but you know what I have to disagree with Brian. Trump, in my opinion, it's. I mean, let's be honest. In Trump's wildest dreams, he never would have thought he'd be president. How could anybody predict this? I mean. It, it, if you're the president of the United States, you're in a lead company. That's a job that nobody can, Alex, if you would have told me 20 years ago Donald Trump would have been president, you would, you would have, have thought I was yeah. insane yeah. to say that. Yeah. You'd yeah. have been a Simpsons writer. But you uh, see, he almost, doesn't deserve the job. He's in over his head, it showed. Well, also, that's what it is. I think when he closes the door, he's like, how the fuck did I get here? Well, uh, also, it's the mediaization of America that's taken place here. And that it, that made him possible, uh, it, you know. Before it, because um, I, I'm going to have to say this. And I sound like an elitist when I say this, but Americans, but by and large, are pretty stupid, you know. Mm -hmm. And they think they can't tell the difference between real life and reality television, and they couldn't tell the difference between Donald Trump, the TV star, and Donald Trump, the guy yeah. who was running for president, saying, "I know how to solve the economic problem in this country." When in fact, uh, he really didn't know how to. You know, so I mean, but but, but people went, "Hey, that's the guy on TV. That's the guy who says you're fired." You know, uh, yeah, he could be president. Sure, why not? Why not? Look at what he's doing. He doesn't know how to be president. He doesn't know how to care about being president. And our another, system allowed him to be. Well, yeah, but here's a here's the thing, though, Bree. If you really think about it, most presidents should have a grasp of and a working knowledge of the law system. He's not even a lawyer. Basically, he's being exposed just when he opens his mouth. I, he is not I qualified think, for this position. When I was when I was growing up, they used to say, well, this is a country where anybody can grow up and be president. Well, I mm -hmm. guess we just proved it, didn't we? True. Yeah. Yeah. True. yeah. You know, I don't know that we want everybody to grow up to be able to be president. I think we want the most accomplished people for that particular job to become president. I mean, like you said, Alex, if, he was never if, a senator. He was never a governor. He I'll, was never a mayor. He never ran anything. Other than failed businesses. He couldn't, he couldn't yeah, um, except failed businesses, exactly. Which he was still waiting well, on the taxes you know, for four years. Yeah. Based on that, I, I would have been more comfortable with Pete Buttigieg as the vice presidential choice. I think that he's proven, he, he kind of, he, he's just an intellect. You know, he's, he's on the ball. He's sharp-witted. And I think he hey, got listen, to where I, he got because yeah. he's smart. Not because of who he had a relationship with or... Or who he, you know, or, or his, or his race. I, I think he he really did it. I would feel more comfortable with him as vice president. I can agree. That's well, my opinion. Well, I would, I would, I would too. But I wouldn't be satisfied that he would help the ticket. Okay, yeah, at this yeah, point, yeah. there there'd be no evangelicals or any any Christians that yeah. would vote for that ticket. You yeah, know? I think the only way he, I mean, I think, quite frankly, of all the people that was running, he was the one I was I liked the most. I yeah, thought he was smart. Good. I thought he was sharp. I thought he had uh, the right things. to. So say. what? So look, what kind of a system do we have 
where the people who get eventually on the ticket are not the ones that we think are really the best. Uh, listen, look, right. look, we can go back to when I was born and they used to hold these conventions and they were all brokered at the conventions. You know, yeah. they all made bargains in the back room and the, the one who did the best bargaining became the, the winner, okay? Uh, it, it, it's been no difference. You see, what you're doing is you're, you're looking upon the individual parties picking their nominees as mm -hmm. part of the political system, and it really isn't. It is simply a function of the parties. You know, I mean, I often have argued that the parties should be paying for all the primaries because the only per people that it serves are these these parties, you know, to find out who their nominee is going to be. Why should we be paying for it? Yes, Robert. I think we're also failing to remember that in many cases, in fact, most cases, mm -hmm. vice presidential candidates are chosen for reasons other than their qualifications to be president, like it or not. They're chosen because they satisfy certain wings within the party mm -hmm. or they're chosen to achieve some kind of geographical balance or or in this and, and, in this particular case racial balance you know and here's where we have a problem and here's where we have a problem because biden very likely may not serve those four years it's there's a possibility not only because of age but because we have a global pandemic we have a disease that could easily take someone out you know in their in their elderly years so i think that it matters more this election to you, and to you. Huh. you're the only one speaking huh. against harris right she, now. he's had yeah. a hard on for harris for the longest time and i uh, wish it were I'm, a good hard on you know for all the right reasons really uh, i would love harris to be the governor of pennsylvania uh but not the not look, the president look, of the look, united states look, uh, 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 let, let me let me ask you this how experienced for the job was Donald Trump? Um, to Trump. the degree that the media no, no, creates no, no, that no. I'm, I'm not saying Come that. On. I'm not saying that. You're talking about competency to take over the job. What made him competent to be president of the United States? Uh, he, you know, he, the what, fact what? that he... He had to deal with the media in New York. No, no, as, no, no that, that, that's, uh, that, but that's, he's a business that, that's not what I'm saying to you. You're talking about running a country in the middle of a COVID crisis, uh, and you're talking about somebody having the kind of experience it takes to be able to handle something like that. My same question would, to you would be about Obama. When Obama became president, he had only been a senator for two years, and one of those years he was running for president. Oh, he, he had been a lawyer. No, he'd been a lawyer. Wait a minute. But he, he, I'm talking about a political a professional who could who could take over the reins of government. He had to learn it like anybody else. The only people that have been good presidents from the get-go have been people who've been governors, because the, a, a, a running a state is running the United States in microcosm. Okay, you have all the same things you need to know: budgets and and uh, the, you know the police and uh, executive branch. Executive branch, yeah, but uh, in fact, senators make lousy presidents. You know, so, yeah, so yeah, you know, uh, but and we're going to get one. Governor, yeah. what? We're well, no, get... no, no. You're about to get a former vice president. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you want to talk about experience for that job? He was in there every day of the week with with Obama, and he had a deal with him that if he ran for vice president with him, he would not be left out of any meetings. Okay, so he was there for everything. So, Jeff, Jeff, you had your hand up. Jeff had his hand up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say that the the president, one of their big jobs, is to communicate to all of us mm -hmm. frequently, yeah. and not only that, to make it so we can understand what he says. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's what Obama was good at. Yeah, but here we had a we have a crisis. Unlike any other we've faced, I think I don't. I don't even think a war has 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 wars didn't come to our front door. Okay, they were fought somewhere else. Uh, this war is being fought here. The people, the troops that are dying are here. You got to remember, two hundred and ten thousand people so far have died. Maybe more. I don't know what's the total today. I haven't looked. Two hundred sixteen thousand. Two hundred sixteen thousand. Do you know how many died in World War Two? Less. 
about mm -hmm. 500,000. We're going to, we're going to get to 400,000 before this is over. Mm -hmm. We're going to mm -hmm. have lost, we lost, we've already lost more people than we lost in <coughs> Vietnam five times, four times. Yeah. Okay. How many people died in the Spanish, uh, flu? Of the Spanish flu? Uh, well, the worldwide, yeah. that was 50 million, yeah. I think. Really? Wor worldwide, yeah. 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 Wow. So, and, you know, and the population was was much smaller. It was oh, such yeah. a bad flu that it stopped the war for a while. Yeah, they had to pause the war. They had to pause the war for the flu. And then they got over it and, you know. But, uh, and, and that flu was in some ways far more manageable. It just killed everybody really fast. And we didn't have the medicine to fight it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but if if we had the same strain today of the Spanish flu and it showed up, it would be a bad cold in the Bronx, you know, because we'd know how to handle it. We'd have the, the medicine to be able to handle it, too. But what I'm saying is is that what's, what, you know, where, where's the school to learn to be president? And I think Obama wasn't ready to be president, but he became president. And uh, in his second term, I think he finally yeah. learned how to be president. And he kind of learned how to be president at the feet of Joe Biden, you know, who was there helping him but along the way. Let's let's take a look at what Obama was able to accomplish. Now, I'm not saying Obama, but when the when the Senate is held by the Republicans. So what's going to happen is even if Biden becomes president, what will he be able to do if the Senate stays Republican? And well, now well, the I wouldn't Court I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't Republican. I wouldn't count on that. Yeah. I wouldn't count on that. What what can he do if he's got the Senate, the uh, the House of Representatives, uh, and the presidency? What can he do then? A lot of things. A lot Declare of war. A lot, a lot of easier. things. Oh, stop. Stop. What are you trying to be, the new Phil? Come on. Well, you're well, just throwing <laughs> shit at the wall tonight. And if something maybe sticks. You know, Bree. Occam's razor, you know, the simplest explanation is usually the right explanation. You're coming up with conspiracy theories and gaffes and, what? you know, what What's part the of conspiracy the shit you're theory? throwing do you expect what us to stick? Theory? What's the What's conspiracy that? theory that I'm floating? Oh, hmm. well, you're going to talk this. starting a war. Wait, wait, wait. That's a conspiracy. Starting a war. The night of oh, the election, the he's going to not leave office and he's just going to maintain his seat in the White House. You want a list of conspiracies that I've heard? I, these are not conspiracies. These are oh, topics for conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the lighting, we can't see your face. So it looks more suspicious. Uh, what's the name of that? What's, yeah, the, what's, yeah. what's the name Better of that? Lighting. What's the name yeah, of that? There's a conspiracy of my life. Well, Who what, are you? What's the name of that fringe group we got going for us now? The um, um, Poor uh, Boys? Uh, no, the Q other. Q what? QAnon. Q QAnon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what the, mm -hmm. all those stupid acronyms. Well, what, are. I'm, what I'm saying is you're kind, of, you're kind of sounding like QAnon here with all these, you know. And then, of course, what if we are attacked? By aliens from outer space, is he the president you want in office when that happens? You got to talk to uh, who's the Utah senator that uh, is funding that? Harry Reid. Funding what? Harry Reid was some UFOs. Uh, the, 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 uh, the aircraft carrier off of Southern California. They still haven't explained those encounters. Oh, I, I think I I think the world in this this flu season is starting to come up already. I think the world's going to be so inundated with COVID and flu issues the next eight months yeah. that there's going to be no talk about anything else but the economy. I'm planning I mean, not this, this, this big second wave is coming, and we've always said this wave is going to come. Yeah. And unfortunately, because we didn't nip it in the butt the last you know three or four months ago when we could have, and then waited for this wave to come up and been ready for it, we're unprepared again. And, and this is going to hit very, very hard. And you know something? Marjorie and I have decided we're not leaving the house now. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's it. Everybody out there gets sick. Do not come to my house, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, because, I mean, it, it, it's trying to grab hold here in New York, but we're being very proactive about it, okay? And if it weren't for the yids in, uh, in, uh, in Brooklyn, yeah. uh, we really wouldn't can. have the problem we got right now. But those guys, they're, they're, they're you know, they're crazy. They're nuts. They want to see God. You know, well, no, what they're doing, 
They don't understand this. What they're doing is creating their old se own self-inflicted holocaust. Yeah. That's right. You don't want to listen. You know. No, they yeah. don't want to listen. They don't want to listen. They want to fight it. They went to court to fight mm. Cuomo. We don't want to have to uh, uh, limit the amount of people that come into our shuls. Well, screw you. Y yeah, Robert. In Jersey, we have a community um, named Lakewood. Mm -hmm. And Lakewood is Hasidic Jews, much like Pearl River, New York, where it's a large enclave of Hasidic Jews. And yeah. so I, I see these people, these community leaders from the Hasidic community yeah. uh, barking about their freedoms being taken away, wearing masks. All the while, while they're talking about this, they're wearing a yarmulke, which to yeah. me... It's just a mask. It's just a it's just a It's a mask that's <laughs> six inches here? higher. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All you have to do is move it down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the solution would be there. I mean, I, that I don't get how it's violating their civil rights. You know, no, not wearing it is violating my civil rights. Yeah, that oh, is he's wearing right. a seatbelt. But as a, you know, as a as a populist, we've decided that it's the right thing to do. Hey, listen, so can I can not yeah. driving while you're drunk? Can I you go know? to your Orthodox synagogue and not put on a yarmulke? Yeah, well, try to tell me pork. You you won't let me come in. Yeah, you won't let me come in without a yarmulke eating a spare rib. Come on, exactly. you know, I mean, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, there are, there are rules and you have to abide by them. And just because your religion doesn't make you um, uh, not have to abide by the rules of safety created by the society, you know. It's not like, you know, it's not like Hitler. We're not rounding them up and putting them in concentration camps. In fact, yeah. quite the opposite. That would be a super spreading event. You know. That's what Trump's trying to do. Huh? You know, there's so many people in the United States that walk around mm -hmm. without wearing masks oh. all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and that will that, continue. And they're not, That's not religious change. Jews. But how it ever became a political issue is beyond me. I think, like you said, it was Trump not wearing it in the beginning. Yeah, like, I mean, it, 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 it's not a political it. issue. It's it's a it's a you don't want to die. Wear a fucking mask. You don't want your neighbor to die. Wear a fucking mask. I just got I demonetized. Right. Um, but wear a mask. So you think that Biden will get people to wear masks? I think Maybe not I, at this point. Well, you know, if if the president were wearing a mask at all these rallies. OK, he would be encouraging people and not letting anybody in who wasn't wearing a mask. Then he might be setting a good example, but he's not. He's letting anybody in those people there. You look at the group. Maybe yeah. there's one guy wearing a mask and that's about it. And you go, Somebody come was on. There. Huh? Well, you Somebody should be happy. They, said they put people with masks or they have masks for people behind Trump. But they said on the other side that people, yeah, you know, it's was like 25 percent was wearing them. Of yeah. course. I mean, it, 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 it's, just, it's just absurd how any of this has become political. This is something that we are doing to try and save our lives, you know. But you and, know what? It's like when Trump said at the last debate, he, when he made that snide comment about Biden, even when Biden's out, we've got a big mascot. Yeah. 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 What's wrong with that? I look at him like, are you mental? Really? What's wrong with it, idiot? It's like he's just a bully. Well, I'm, you know, as a president, among other, right. among your other jobs, besides, I hopefully taking out the garbage, uh, is uh, is to set an example to other people, to be yeah. an example for other people. Exactly. And all he didn't have to do anything during this COVID crisis except one thing: wear a mask and tell people to wear one. And he, by that very action, we probably would have 100,000 less deaths right now. Yep. On MSNBC, mm -hmm. they spoke to Trump supporters um, lined up for a rally, and they asked the supporters, would you wear a mask if Trump asked you to? And they said, absolutely, we'll do whatever the president says. Yeah. yeah. So, I think there was a point where he did say, wear a mask. Too late. It, it, it was too late, and it didn't carry with it the weight he wa he should have carried. It was like yeah, begrudgingly he was saying it. You know, he'd I'm say, sorry. "Yeah, yeah, wear, wear a mask I mean, once in a while, but you know, you know, not you don't got to do it all the time." You know, that's yeah. how he was. 
Yeah. What he opts for usually is is the victimization. Yeah. He wants to have his voters see it as it's us against the world. Look yeah. what they're making us do. Yeah. Therefore, he propagates the theory that there's this oppressive uh, force that's it's making like, them go beyond their rights and so forth. He loves that shit. It's effectively his base. Yeah. Just like yeah. that bullshit. Women, oh, yeah. I saved your neighborhoods. I mean, fuck yeah. you. I saved you my neighborhood from who? Who the fuck are you talking about? You know? It's like. Psh, yeah. You know, so what What do you think is going to happen? So they're doing the next, they're doing two town halls against each other. Or oh, the yeah. next, instead of the next debate. Good. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> He what? doesn't. He 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 don't want to debate. Uh, he doesn't right. want another debate with. Um, he can't answer any questions. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a moron. Yeah. I wonder how the ratings are going to go. That's going to. Well, he's going to. He's going to. He. Yeah. I think he'll get the higher ratings. I really do. I don't think Biden is a rating getter. Okay, but that doesn't mean he's not going to win an election. Yeah, uh, most of the people watching that, you know, town hall for at, for Trump, it's just you know the same people that are. Or most of them are the kind of people that will stop and look at a car crash. Car crash. I, can't, I can't remember what president uh, said that he, they, you know, they didn't used to do debates. Uh, and um, uh, I think it was Eisenhower. They didn't do debates before Eisenhower. And they were asking Eisenhower if he would do a debate. And he said, no. He said, That's what a useless uh, exercise that would be. <laughs> You know, and it wasn't until we did Nixon Kennedy, that's, okay, that's that, that, that it became right. something you did all the time because like the Lincoln Douglas debates. Well, ah. the Lincoln Douglas debates, but was Douglas running for president at the time, or was it just well, a debate? They, I think they were running for Senate. Senate, Senate yeah, Senate. yeah. Senate. yeah. But, but, the, but do you Douglas know what? Won, right? Did Douglas you know won, right? oh, what yeah. the scheme was? One yeah. candidate spoke for an hour, interrupted, followed yeah. by. 90 minutes for rebuttal uninterrupted. Oh, wow. oh my God. Wow. That, that's a debate. What we see on TV isn't a debate. It's just yeah. two campaign speeches. They're yeah. bullshit. Yeah, yeah. That's why I don't watch them. And so when Trump doesn't want to participate in it, how do you feel about that? I don't really give a flying rat's ass. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I, think yeah. that, I think that he doesn't want to do it because he figures at this point with the, and he knows he, he does internal polling, and the internal polling's got to be frightening the crap out of him, okay? Even if they're trying to skew it his way, okay, it's got to be frightening him. And I think he feels that a debate, the what could it do to help him? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, what could a town hall do? Maybe it could help him. And then if he gets higher ratings than Biden, he can say, I got more ratings than Biden. You know, so at least he would have some kind of bragging rights. So really, it's in his best interest not to debate right now. Plus, he's yeah. not a debater; he's an interrupter. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah. And and he doesn't want to do a debate based upon the new rules of the of the people who are holding it, who say they're going to cut his mic if he doesn't shut the fuck up. Oh, I want to see that so bad. Yeah. I want to see him go. <laughs> I'm I'm voting for trap doors. The moment yeah. somebody interrupts, yeah, they pull a switch. Yeah. Boom, <laughs> he's gone. Either that, or let's do what they do on Nickelodeon. How about sliming them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if, you don't shut, if you don't shut up after your time's over, you're going to get slimed. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's, uh, it, you know, I mean, it, but I agree with you, uh, uh, Bree, <clears throat> when you say, you know, what use are these debates? They, they have no function, mm -hmm. really. I don't feel I learn anything out of them. I don't feel, it, you know, it, the lead up to it is like the lead up to a football game with the guy sitting around there saying, well, if he does this in his defense and he does that, then maybe they can win the pa 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 And they do the same thing. They, they Sunday morning, uh, Monday morning quarterback the debate, and then the debate happens, and then afterwards they give you this, the same kind of wrap-up that they would give you on a sports show. And that's not American politics, and that's not what we need to know. Yes, Robert? It just came up on MSNBC that Trump is uh, lauding his uh, latest poll numbers, that he's telling his he told his audience tonight that he loves his latest poll numbers. It reminds me— Did he say what they were? No, I, I didn't. Yeah. I only saw the crawls. I, you know, I, I don't 
I don't have the sound on. Mm -hmm. But it reminds me of a quote I heard in grad school. Apparently, there was a political scientist back in the 1800s who once yeah. said, many people use statistics in the manner that a drunk uses a lamppost for support rather than illumination. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, let's see, I'm looking at... Um, I'm looking at uh, Drudge. Now, Drudge doesn't like Trump anymore, okay? Yeah. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the, you have to understand that. Mm. But, for instance, his headlines, Trump headed for trouble and not changing course, struggles to mount clear closing argument, a little bit concerned, it says, rank and file Republicans confident as ever of victory. Well, they're, they're yeah. Biden has yeah. raised like 383 million, the most for a presidential candidate in a month. You know, again, pointing out the flaws of our system. I think we should give each candidate, you know, five percent media's time, and then turn that money over to uh, places where it's really needed. You know, maybe yeah. to you know organizations or groups that are feeding vets, or, or you know, we we have such the wrong priorities about where we spend our money, and it's always about who can raise the most money and spend the most ads. And it's, uh, uh, like, it, it's it, really it, ridiculous. His headlines here, 15 million already voted, record turnout alarms Republicans, lines as far as the eye can see, Biden plus seven in Georgia. Oh. When oh. did you ever think that was going to happen? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And by the way, it's that's kind of unusual, the Republicans <laughs> crying <laughs> that the Democrats have raised more money. That's a new one. <laughs> Look at what yeah. he's got there. A new Trump Tower. Trump Tower. <laughs> He's coming he in. won't go to jail. Two months. We have we have a tradition in our country that the a president or vice president, even when they're criminals, they get they essentially get pardoned. It's too much of an embarrassment. Uh, it's just the way it's done. By the way, we don't care way, about embarrassing him. Yeah. yeah. Boy, yeah. I'm, I don't care at all. It's a whole different story. There's something in the air tonight. I feel wheezy here. Anyway, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I was passing by Trump Tower yesterday because I do on the way to my dentist, uh, driving over the Black Lives Matter that's written there. And it's like an armed fortress around Trump Tower. The, the fences and so on, and streets you can't go up and down. I mean, it's incredible. And since he's been president, I think we our cost is something like $200,000 a day. Am I... Am I Overestimating that, Robert? Am I right on that? Oh, I've heard a figure in that neighborhood. Two hundred thousand yeah. dollars a day to protect that edifice. All right. Thank God he's no longer going to be president. We can save how many millions of dollars here in New York City and use it somewhere else rather than protecting a piece of property. You know. Yes, uh, John. And, and, uh, who's going to buy that thing when it gets foreclosed on him? Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be so funny. What right. are they going to do with that fucking thing? Tear it down? <laughs> Actually, it's a very impressive building. To be it's honest. ugly as fucking hell. <laughs> I don't know that it's ugly. I think I, it's, you know. I've been in it. Have you ever been in that thing? Listen, we're building uglier buildings in this town. Now, we got these, these what they look like, uh, what kind of, how can I describe them? They're pencil buildings yeah they look mm -hmm. like pencils in on the skyline yeah they're weird looking and then there's another one that goes up you know straight up and down and then it has a deck coming out of it yeah that yeah. has it's made of pure glass so you can all you can see is is 400 500 feet below you mm -hmm. right yeah. and it looks like a duck <laughs> i mean <laughs> come on you want to talk about ugly buildings you know trump tower is a, is, a, is a monument to to aesthetic taste compared to these things. Oh, no. You know, Trump may or may not go to jail, but if I were him, what I'd be worried more about is that guy named Igor with the nose that goes this way <laughs> that, that shows up looking to collect on his debt. Yeah. yeah That's the yeah. guy I'd be I'm afraid sure of. He's, yeah. I'm sure he's done what he needs to do to we'll rectify see. the... We'll see. Well, you know, there's only one reason why Trump hasn't been willing to reveal his tax yeah. taxes, because he doesn't want to show everybody that he's not a billionaire. Yeah. You know, he's he's made a career out of being the pro prototypical <laughs> billionaire and putting his name on buildings and franchising the mm -hmm. name out to these buildings. Charlie, you've been quiet tonight. Anything to say there from Texas? 
I don't think I've been quiet. I've been piping up quite a bit. Well, yeah. Well, I just I want to make sure you were getting yourself in there, you know, because I know you're you're kind of a nice guy, you <laughs> well, know, and and you don't like to interrupt. And so, and the same thing with Jeff. I always call on Jeff every now and then because Jeff is really, you know, he, when he really has something to say, he has something to say. But you know, and Tony, well, you know, what? Sometimes. did you see the latest from uh, the Ice Cube was helping some uh, White House initiative, and he's getting blasted on uh, social media Platinum. for helping. Yeah, uh, I, I think it was that Trump thanked him for something that. He didn't really do or something like that. He, he, <clears throat> I don't know. Check that story out. Something's Why? It's something that. It's something that he didn't do, and now he's getting blamed for having something to do with Trump? No, no Trump claimed yeah. he, he, he sent out some tweet. He's, oh, I want to thank Ice Cube for, you know, helping me out some kind of project. And, and I don't think Ice Cube had anything to do with that or something. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I he, he's, he's using everybody to endorse him who isn't endorsing him. Like Fauci yeah. is really mad. Yeah, really you know. mad because Love he's he, he, he rock he, bands are mad that they keep using their, their music. Yeah, well, finally, they're yeah. down. To, he's down to using YMCA by the village <laughs> yeah, people. And he doesn't he doesn't even him. understand what the song's about. OK, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Jeff. Jeff, I saw Harris speaking. Yes, uh, today. Yeah. And you know what? She's got a very good sense of humor. And I was so surprised that it would be that good. But the first question is somebody asked her at the end, did you really actually see the bug on the vice president? Yes, yes, <laughs> well, yes. I, yeah. She absolutely cracked up. Boy, would I like to be a fly on the head you know, <laughs> instead of a fly guys, on the wall. Did you guys see the Saturday Night Live uh, yeah. thing? Yeah. Yeah, it was, was, it was pretty clumsy. I, I thought yeah, that was I, I thought that was the worst Saturday Night Live I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That that show the other night. Nothing was funny except for the news segment. And even that was kind of soft. And now <laughs> you've got a poster for her now. Uh, Adrian <laughs> <made that>, <laughs> 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 for president. <laughs> She made Vice that President. today. We we yeah. got all the letters, and then she went and painted the background and did the little little birdies. And did you do for her, her? Did you uh, did, nice. did you really paint that, Adrian? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, she's nodding yes wow. for all the people just listening yep. to the audio. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's really nice. So we can use that every time now, right? She wanted to show everybody. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty good. She looks Pretty a little good. tired right now. Are you tired, Adrian? Yeah. No. Yeah, you're, getting no. <laughs> you're getting you're getting drowsy. You're getting drowsy. Good night. Good night. Good night, Adrian. Good night. Bye, bye, bye. What? What? What did she say? Oh wow. She muted it. Hmm. Well, there's our theme know. anyway. We've got protests in uh, Thailand. If you're looking for some other news to watch, you can read about the yeah. Thai protests. Okay. Anyway, hey, listen. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Brian, uh, Brian, uh, <laughs> Brian and, uh, and, 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 and Adrian. And thank you to Charlie Wallace. And thank you, Robert. Great to have you back. God, we, we yeah. think the world of you. You know, same thing with you, uh, 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 Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Bree, you've taken up a nice slack for us here. Uh, uh, also, thanks to John Larkin. And of course, thank you always to Tony. What I'd like you all to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel, and uh, they're off into the sunset. Hopefully, they'll be back again tomorrow night. Maybe you'll join us as well. In the meantime, the next show right after us is The Intersection with Jack Bishop. It's called The Intersection, and uh, they will be taking calls via Skype. The Skype handle being GadNet Live. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time. 
Yep, and the same station in life in the meantime. As always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And everybody, wear a mask, will you please? Be safe out there. <laughs>